Coming up on this edition of Able Den on Air, we talk to Elka Goltz, originally from the Bronx and now Orange County, New York. She talks to us about vacations and people with disabilities, people with special needs who want to go on vacation, and she also specializes in booking vacations for people with disabilities. All that and much more. Pack your bags. We start right now on this edition of Abled and On Air. Major sponsors for Ableton on Air include Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Ableton on Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yihad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx. Able and On Air has been seen in the following publications. Parchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Ableton On Air is part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television, Arts, and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists. Welcome to this edition of Able Den On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. We focus on abilities despite disabilities. On this particular program, we focus on planning a vacation and people with disabilities. With me to discuss this, she's originally from the Bronx. Her name is Elka Goltz. Welcome to Able Den On Air, Elka. Thank you so much, Larry. Thank you for having me. Okay. What is the missions and goals of your um, company, Name Your Destination? Go ahead. Well, our mission is to provide the best value for all your travels. We are your personal travel consultants, whether it be a business trip, a personal vacation. We will create a travel itinerary that is best for you based on your style, budget, and desired experience. Okay. Now, tra Goodbye. Travel is exciting. The anticipation of planning for that wonderful adventure can provide newfound energy, but planning an itinerary for family, business, or even a large group can be time consuming, frustrating, and tiresome. We do the research and the price product comparison shopping so that you don't have to. And I wanted to say that always in the mindset of assisting to make life more efficient for others, coupled with the excitement of travel, I found that developing a travel program for those with disabilities and individuals on the spectrum would speak to me. We look forward to doing the research and providing the right itinerary to make things easier for you so that your journey is safe, fun, and memorable. Our motto, experience is wisdom, take a trip and feed your soul. Okay. Um, why did you want to become a travel agent for people with disabilities? I really believe that although there is more awareness for those that I feel should be considered 
disabled. Um, there isn't enough uh, of service from travel agencies to provide all that somebody with a disability or several disabilities would need to be accommodated for them to be able to enjoy travel as well. Okay, now this is an added question. Do you feel that everything, or I should say all venues, uh, should be um, disability friendly? Um, ha have you done research to find um, the differences between a non um, disabled venue and a, dis and a disability friendly venue? Because for example, if you go to a church or you go to a, some type of building, they have what they call the, the grandfather law. Um, and it's not necessary for people to have that as an accessible venue. Um, go ahead if you want to add anything to that, if I said it wrong. Well, no, no. Uh, I, I have been doing research. I continue to do research practically every day. It is part of my mission to research what I can, to find out as much as possible so that I can accommodate my clients. And uh, I also realize that, for example, with cruise lines, the smaller yachts are not necessarily ADA compliant, but the larger cruise lines definitely are. Um, I, I realized that uh, the cruise lines have really gone out of their way to accommodate uh, those who are wheelchair bound, as well as children on the spectrum. Uh, mm -hmm. We have uh, Carnival Cruise, which has a program set in place, as well as Royal Caribbean. And I wanted to let your audience know that in doing my research, um, say for example, the ARC, they uh, have a program called the ARCS Wings for Autism, which has families uh, come you know, into their facility and participate in a program for the children and the families to get an experience of what it is like, especially a child on, on the spectrum, to be able to experience going through the airport waiting, uh, you know, in the waiting area before you board, what it's like to be on board an aircraft. They have an assimilation program for that as well, which I think is really great. And it's not available everywhere. But what I find interesting is that if you go onto their website, they have an area where you can, um, you can find out where there is a facility available in your area if they if you don't have one, which I think is also very helpful. Um, Wings gives the airport, the airline, the TSA professionals and other personnel the opportunity to observe, interact and deliver their services in a structured learning environment. So this improves their disability competency and processes for the accommodating all passengers as they fly. Papers and television, you know, uh, people with disabilities being taken off planes. Um, you know, the TSA hasn't been the the Transportation Safety Administration hasn't been exactly great for people with disabilities when flying and security. Um, could you kind of shed light on? you know, how those rules should change um, when a person, for example, a, a TSA agent in years past, when someone had cancer, they made somebody do a full body search. And the research that I've done, uh, being the fact that my wife is an amputee, and I'm not, I'm not ashamed of that, being the, wife, uh, being the husband of an amputee, I know that the TSA cannot make the person take off their leg uh, or arm or whatever is the problem.
prosthetic when traveling. Can you shed some light on some of those rules or research? Well, I, I can't speak for every uh, TSA uh, process in every airport, and I cannot speak to uh, the rules and regulations for every airline. I, I do believe that more research has to be done. I feel that our legislation has to be changed as well. Um, not enough airports are accommodating the uh, those with disabilities. I agree with you. Um, but I do know for a fact that there are certain airlines that are very much on board to show respect and consideration for those with disabilities. Uh, Delta happens to be one of them and United Airlines as well. They have programs set in place for training for their, their, um, their staff. And uh, they have accommodations made for, the, for those with disabilities and their families to go through a quick check process so they well, don't have to be online. Check, uh, can you explain what a quick check process is? I'm sorry, go ahead. So a quick check process, um, in other words, instead of the individual traveler or the family with somebody with a disability having to go through the regular security line, which could take a long time, you can bypass that. And um, just... If you give me one second, I have information on how um, those with disabilities can actually get a badge so that they are identified, that they are somebody with needs. And um, do you have so, to travel, do you have to, since you said that, a pardon? badge? Pardon? No, I'm saying since you said a badge, do you also have to travel with a medical letter from a doctor stating that you, you need extra assistance when traveling? It, it would be helpful. I, 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 I believe that it's not necessary, but it would be helpful, especially for someone who, say, may suffer from, um, you know, an ailment that might cause them to uh, pass out for example, or um, somebody who is uh, diabetic, for example, if they are in need of holding on to their medication on a carry bag. You what know, about, what their, about traveling or, or what about dietary needs? Do, air, do airlines help people with disabilities? With di I know, for example, in past years when I've traveled LL to Israel, um, I was able to get glock kosher because that's what I eat. Uh, so I mm -hmm. eat glock kosher meal. Um, yes. But are all airlines able to provide dietary needs for people as well? Well, I, I can't speak to all the airlines. I do know uh, several of them that will accommodate dietary needs. And actually, that is one of the many questions that I ask when I'm doing a consultation with a client. I will ask them uh, if they have any special medications that they will be taking with them. I ask them if they have dietary restrictions, if they have celiac disease and cannot tolerate anything with gluten. I ask these questions and then I will reinforce to the airline when I make their arrangements to ensure that if they're flying, I believe the time frame is over two hours that if you are flying with an airline, they need to provide a meal or even a snack. I will reconfirm with that airline that they can accommodate my client who has dietary restrictions. Okay. Um, uh, but to, to get back uh, on our previous subject for one second, I wanted to let your viewers, um, your listeners know that there's something called a sunflower lanyard that indicates in a subtle way that the wearer has an invisible disability that is unseen, for example, autism, anxiety, or even schizophrenia. And that there is a way for them to get, uh, you know, that badge and that they can call um, TSA cares.
Okay. Um, and I can even provide them if they need for me to do that for them. I can make arrangements for them to get the badge as well. Yeah. Um, do you think uh, things are improving with the travel industry? Why or why not? I want to say they are improving. They're not improving as quickly as I would prefer or as you would prefer. But I really do believe with the information that I've researched and my continued research that more suppliers, cruise lines, airlines, hotels are becoming much more aware of the fact that there are those with disabilities that seek to travel and they need those accommodations. Okay. Um, what are the misconceptions around people with disabilities or special needs that travel? That well, I can give you a specific uh, example of children who are on the spectrum mm -hmm. because not everyone understands what that means. Yep. And for example, if a family is in a restaurant with a child on the spectrum, maybe that child is not high on the spectrum. Maybe they're somewhere in the middle of the spectrum and it's their first or second time experiencing what it's like to be in a restaurant. A child on the spectrum does not process information the same way you and I do. So they may not be prepared for the stimuli that is taking place around them. They may not understand specifically what is going on. Can and you explain? Overwhelmed. Can you, I, okay, I apologize. Can you explain what you mean by stimulation or stimuli in this case? Certainly. So when, when you and I are going into a restaurant, there are a lot of things that you and I don't even, we're not aware that we are processing all at once. It becomes automatic for us, like breathing. You walk into a restaurant, and the first thing you experience is the smells. There could be uh, garlic or onions or steak wafting through the air. Uh, there could be a lot of noise going on from the kitchen. There could be a baby crying in a corner with a family in the restaurant. There could be music playing. Uh, there might it, there might be a crowded situation when people are coming in in and out of the the, the vestibule to get in and out of the restaurant. Mm -hmm. All of these things are going on at once. You and I can accommodate for all of that and process it automatically. And it may not bother you. It may not bother me. But a child or an individual adult on the spectrum, the smells might might be overwhelming. The noise might be overwhelming. Uh, several people surrounding you getting in and out of the restaurant might be overwhelming. And they sometimes do not know how to process that information all at once. So what you're saying is that, an example, a person with autism might be uh, overstimulated in certain instances. Right. And might need more help. Right. So, so a child on the spectrum becomes overwhelmed by all of this stimuli and they don't know how to deal with it. So they may act out. They may throw a fork or may, they may hit their, a table or, or go to punch something because they're frustrated and they don't know how to let out their frustration. And they can't always express how they're feeling or what they're thinking, especially if they're um, somebody on the spectrum who does not speak. So it, it becomes overwhelming. Now to somebody outside of that situation, observing the child from 20 or 30 feet away in the restaurant, they may think, oh, there goes a bratty child and the parents just don't know how to discipline that child what a shame. And that cannot be further from the truth. And other people may think if a child is on the spectrum, that they're stupid. And I have to tell you, Larry, there are many, many children and adults on the spectrum who are so high functioning in other areas 
they are like geniuses when it comes to music or math. So those that don't understand what it means to be on the spectrum tend to criticize or judge, whereas in my opinion, they need to just be trained and educated on what is going on. And that children on the spectrum, they're just, they're special, but they're very capable and they're very aware of who's saying what, and they have feelings just like you and I, they're very intelligent individuals. They just have special needs in order to accommodate their surroundings and to process information being provided to them. Speaking of which, <clears throat> overstimulation on the spectrum, or maybe someone might be deaf or hard of hearing. Right. Places such as Disney's theme parks. Okay. <laughs> um, Disney's, their tagline is where, de where dreams come true. Uh, now, do, um, what if someone wants to go to a theme park? Are all theme parks... Uh, do theme parks, for example, offer special services for people with autism or deafness or visual? Actually, yes, they, they do. Yeah. Um, I, I know that Disney does. And I also know that Merlin Entertainment for Legoland does as well. In fact, they Merlin, have... Merlin, is that, is that Steven Spielberg's park, I think, right, Merlin? <laughs> I think so. Um, I I'm oh, not... no, that's Amblin Entertainment. I'm sorry, right. my, my fault. My yeah, fault. yeah no. Mer Merlin Entertainment, I, I actually have become an affiliate uh, with Merlin Entertainment and Partnerize to provide uh, travel for the theme parks that they have, not only in the United States, but in London, uh, in France, um, they, in Scotland. They have special rooms where a child on the spectrum can be taken to in order to feel, really in every situation, to feel safe, to feel that they are being accommodated and not be overwhelmed. So the children on the spectrum are very tactile. They're tactile individuals. Hey, and explain so, what you mean by that. I'm sorry, go ahead. So... Children on the spectrum relate to touching, relate to being able to interact with certain toys, like um, a spinner that can calm them down. And so like Legoland has a special room that children on the spectrum can go to that can accommodate their needs so that they feel safe and they feel that they can interact and not be overwhelmed by a large crowd they are given the opportunity to bypass lines instead of being told they have to stay with their family on a long line where too many people might overstimulate them and overwhelm them. They are given that opportunity to bypass that line if they want to go and see a specific area of the park. Okay, and also there's another one. Um, Morgan's Wonderland in Texas which, that was started by a parent um, that's also completely accessible also. So it's very, um, <clears throat> it, it's a theme park com specifically for people with disabilities. So I, rem I remember you uh, sending me information. I have to take a look at that because I'm very much interested in providing that mm -hmm. as an option for my clients as well. And I appreciate you sending me that information. Okay, no problem. Um, now... Um, is there any, um, before we continue, um, did, is there a question that you wanted me to ask you, or is there any other information you want to provide about, um, you know, people on the spectrum or people with disabilities as a whole when traveling? Most, most definitely. Um, first, I wanted to let you know that I recently, in my research, uh, contacted a firm that specifically uh, designs tours and vacations for wheelchair-bound individuals called Wheel the World. And I've just become an affiliate with that firm. So I'm excited for that. But I also 
So I wanted to let your viewers know that a child or individuals on the spectrum who may not be ready to go on an airplane and travel for three or six hours to another area of the United States or over the pond to Scotland or London, that parents can take, you know, a two hour ride uh, away from home once their child gets used to riding in, in a car or, you know, a vehicle to accommodate them to go for the afternoon to, you know, go to go to a small, uh, maybe an outdoor cafe that that isn't too crowded to get them started to get them familiar with what it means to travel away from home and to provide them the information they will need ahead of time to prepare them. And for those who uh, are used to traveling with their families and want to get away even for a day or two, that there are dude ranches that are specifically geared for therapy horse riding for children with disabilities and children on the spectrum. Speaking of, of, of which, um, I know that there's an agency in for years, <clears throat> it's called the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Yes. And, and they do provide, like if a child is, has um, a certain disease or disability, they kind of help them and make a wish. Are, <clears throat> are, you of, are, are you affiliated with them or do you know of any travel agents that are and um, how does those agencies play into helping people travel? If you let's say you need to go to a, for a cancer treatment or um, something along those lines, um, how does that work? Well, that's an excellent question. Um, I, I've I've not yet uh, become an affiliate of any agencies that will work with. Um, you know, make a wish foundation. I have to look further into it, which I think I'm going to do. I think it behooves me and my clients to be able to find that information out. But I do know of companies um, that, you know, supply products that they themselves contribute millions of dollars to make a wish foundation. And uh, that's something I think I'm going to look into. And if you allow me the opportunity to do that and then get back to you on that, I would love to be able to answer that question when I have more information. Okay. Well, um, what, before we end, what is the future of traveling for people with disabilities? Um, now, we know no system is perfect. And, you know, things are, especially globally, not everything or not every venue is accessible. I wish it right. was. Um, yes. But do you have any thoughts on global accessibility when it comes to traveling? Well, um, I, I, I happen to have not just, uh, you know, found Wheels the World as one uh, travel program that accommodates those that are wheelchair bound um, to travel different countries. But uh, I'm in touch with another firm that accommodates the visually impaired and the blind. So I continue to find new suppliers, new venues that are accessible to those with almost every disability that we can think of. Are there enough venues and, you know, suppliers that will accommodate? No, there are not. Um, we need to advocate. I myself do what I can to advocate so that, uh, you know, suppliers are more aware, so that more suppliers come on board, more airlines will come on board to accommodate wheelchair accessibility or those on the spectrum or those that are, as you mentioned, uh, going through cancer treatment and need to be treated with an ounce of consideration and respect. Because the more vendors, the more suppliers that are educated and trained to accommodate those with disabilities, the more empowered 
those with disabilities will be in order to travel safely and have fun. Okay, well, I would like to thank you for joining us on this edition of Able Den On Air. And uh, can you give us um, a phone number where people can turn? I know your website is being worked on. Um, I'm literally working on my website this week. I'm like in a hurry. I was talking to a webmaster and he was giving me tips. So I'm doing what I can to speed up the process and have my website up and running before August. So uh, what is what is the number that people can contact you? My my mobile number is 347-566-1500. And if you so wish to, anyone listening, can reach me via email by writing to nameyourdestination.ergtravel at gmail.com. Okay, repeat that one more time, please. Nameyourdestination.ergtravel at gmail.com okay well I and would, yeah go ahead Larry if if I may um, I have uh, a couple of uh, venues that uh, those with disabilities and those on the spectrum can take advantage of and what I think I will do rather than taking up too much of your time because I know how precious it is I'm going to email you the list of uh, venues that I have found that can accommodate uh, veterans with disabilities, children in wheelchairs, and those on the spectrum. I think it's very uh, enlightening to know that there are uh, venues not just here in New York, but in other states that people can take advantage of. Okay. Thank you very much. And... and um Thank you for coming on Able Den On Air. And for more, and, inf- yeah. and for more information on, on Name Your Destination, um, their email is nameyourdestinationerg at gmail.com. Thank you, Alka Goats, for joining us on this edition on Able Den On Air. And, Thank you, Larry. Okay. And for more information on Ableton On Air and what you've seen today, you can go to www.orcamedia.net. I'm Lauren Seiler. See you next time on the next edition of Ableton On Air.